Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make one of the classic video game props. I'm gonna make Donkey Kong's barrels. Yep, plural. I'm gonna make two of them. Okay, so let me be honest. I'm not specifically trying to make Donkey Kong's barrels. Uh, my family called, my Aunt Maggie wants to do a parade in Idaho, and they wanna have some sort of giant beer barrel that they can carry through the parade. Don't understand all the, the, the reasons, but this is what they want. So making a foam barrel seemed like a really good idea because this is something that could actually be carried easily as opposed to just getting a wooden barrel. And um, making them out of foam also should be a bit easier than making them out of paper mache, which was their backup plan. Um, and I'm gonna be just making a couple of barrels, which that was one of those things that I get asked, hey, can you make barrels? It seemed just weird enough I should make a video out of it. Basically, a barrel is a bunch of repeated parts, and all they need to be is equal, or the barrel's gonna be lopsided. So I decided this would be the right thing to do with a laser cutter. To make the pattern, I started with a Pepakura pattern. I simplified one of the staves, that's the wooden boards that make up the sides of a barrel, and then I cut that stave into three parts. There's one middle section and then two symmetrical ends. The bands that will wrap around the barrel will hide the middle seams. This lets me scale and arrange the pattern to fit on the floor mat foam so I can make foam barrels that are a good size. That's right, today's classic video game prop is gonna be made from the classic cosplay prop material, floor mat foam. I start cutting the parts. I have a 10 watt diode laser that chews right through the floor mat foam, so cutting out the parts is very easy. Which is nice, because my pattern needs 12 staves, and each one is made from a middle and two ends, so that's 36 parts. They're all cut from just two different pattern shapes. Now, I didn't attach a base on this machine. That way, I can set it on the material that I want to cut out, even if that stuff is a little larger than what the machine can do in one go. So as I cut the parts, sometimes the feet of the cutter would miss the foam. I made little squares to make up the difference. Soon I have my 36 pieces, which are the parts that I need to make one barrel. This becomes this, which is actually pretty easy to believe. First step is to glue the three parts that make up each of the 12 staves. You know, the boards that are the sides of the barrel. I'll cut out those round ends later when I know what the size needs to be. Each seam requires two coats of contact cement. The first barrel I did had a number of seams fail with only one coat. I can use my heat gun to speed up the dry time between coats of glue, which is really helpful. And after I have everything glued together, I roll each stave into a curved piece. The seams are gonna have less stress on them if the parts are pre-curved, considering the final barrel's going to be curved. Then I get to glue these boards together, and each one of these seams also needs two coats of cement. Now that's one thing that I had not considered with this build, was how much glue was gonna be involved. This project is larger than what I typically build, so the seams are longer. One of these seams is about 32 inches, so both sides of foam is about five feet for one coat. Add in a second coat, and I've painted it about 11 feet of foam edge to stick the two pieces of foam together, 12 times. But that's just how you make a barrel, so okay, that's what I did. Once the sides are together, I can figure out how big the end caps need to be. I mark a line one and a half inches down from the edge. That is where I'm gonna put the cap. I cut the floor mat puzzle edge pieces 20 inches long and started gluing them inside of the barrel right under the line that I drew. Three of them will fit with five inches left over, so I know the ring inside is about 55 inches. The round cap should end up being 17 and 3 quarter inches in diameter. I make a compass with a piece of cardboard and draw my circle. And cut out four cap pieces. Now I can't use the laser to cut this part because the circle is too big to fit inside the laser machine. Next I want to add the lines that will make them look like they're made from multiple smaller boards. I can set my Cos Tools ruler right next to the center point from the compass. Now I have two of these rulers. So if I put both in the center, I can now add a four inch wide board to start the cap. Move the rulers and repeat. 
move a few more times, and it looks like I have five boards that make up the caps for the barrels, which are cut from one piece of foam. I need to use a heat gun to shrink the top layer of foam, which opens up the lines that I cut and makes them easier to see. This also heat seals the foam, which should make it easier to paint. So I set the barrels on my turntable and pointed my heat gun at the barrels. You can see where the skin is sealed. I just have to hold still until a full rotation has happened, and then I move up a level to seal the next pass. With both barrels sealed, I can glue the end caps in, apply contact cement to the inside ring of the puzzle edge, and around the end caps, two coats again, especially on the heat treated texture side of the foam. Getting them inside was not as simple as you would think. Uh, the puzzle edge isn't that wide, and the foam actually has expanded a little from the heat sealing treatment. But I still work the cap in and get it stuck. It may not specifically be the weirdest thing that I've made, but it sure feels like it. This was not something I think I would have ever planned to have made. Yeah, Donkey Kong cosplay could be fun, actually. <laughs> Carrying this thing around would be pretty annoying, but um, it's interesting. All right, well, I'm gonna uh, give it a quick base coat using some house paint and a roller, and then, um, I'm not gonna do that good with the wood grain on it. I'm sorry, I'll be serious with you. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, torture myself trying to do a perfect wood grain. I'm gonna get some real simple wood grain uh, put onto this, and uh, then I will wrap the bands around it and do a little bit of silver onto the bands to give them some color, and that's gonna be it. Yep, I said house paint. My habit is to seal my projects with plastic dip spray, but there's just too much surface area. Just rolling house paint felt like a much better plan. It'll take two coats of paint to cover the foam enough, but I've got plenty of paint, so that'll work out fine. Set the barrel down, and I can reach the top to get them painted as well. Once both barrels have a base coat of color, I mix some burnt sienna paint with some water to make bold wood grain lines on the sides of the barrels. And this is that one part of the project where I had serious doubts about the outcome. I could see how this should work, but I really started to doubt myself. The best part, I didn't have enough of the base coat of paint to start over. So I just remembered what Felicia had said many times in the live streams, and that's the project always starts to look worse before it starts to look better. So I stuck with it and got both barrels pinstriped with big old wood grain lines. Then I mixed up a new wash of water, burnt sienna paint, and some shoe polish. So at the very least, I could add some color variation. Then I noticed that if I didn't fully cover the base coat with the wash, it looked a little more like a wood grain. So I have sort of let the bristles and the brush separate, and I made many streaks of wash color in the same direction as my first pass at a wood grain. I also tried to start or stop any brush stroke behind where the bands will be on the barrel. The caps were a little more challenging, but it was still easy enough to get the color streaks added. As the wash dried, I started cutting out some wide bands for the barrel wraps. I made mine from a five foot roll of black two millimeter craft foam. I cut it lengthwise at two inches wide, which is as wide as my ruler. I cut out eight bands total. Now I'm not really sure if five feet will be enough to go around the barrel, but I can always add a short piece if I have to. I wanted a guideline for gluing the bands on, more for glue placement so I don't ruin my paint. So I clamped a carpenter's pencil to a square and then let the barrel spin on my turntable. Now that I've marked both sides, let's make sure I got it cut right. Yeah, okay, good. That's what I hoped. It would be a little under. Okay. Adjust the height for the middle bands, and then just flip the barrel over to mark the next band. Then I'll adjust the pencil again, almost two inches higher, to mark the limit of where the glue is going to go. More glue! More barrel rotations! What I'm happy about is that the bands are going to hide that one middle seam and just one coat of contact cement is gonna be fine because I'm gluing right onto the paint 
and the paint is actually a weak bond, so the paint's going to peel long before the glue lets go. Five feet of strap is not enough to get around the middle sections, but it is long enough to wrap the ends, just barely. To bridge the gap in the middle bands, I cut a few short 16-inch strips. I let the ends overlap and then trim them to be rounded. I made sure to exaggerate the bump for the layer change while gluing the ends down. The middle-sized cause tool hole drill can make a bunch of large rivets. I cut mine from scrap 2mm foam, which are just super glued to the ends of the bands. And I put two rivets on some of the longer connections. I like the look of the plain black bands. It's actually accurate, but I still kind of want a little more color. So I tear up a chunk of project foam and sponge paint some silver over the bands. Now my first thought was to be just a bit of a highlight but I sort of overdid the first band and maybe added a little too much silver. So I just kept it up, sponge painting all the bands so they match. And if I need to repaint them, then the repaint will match. But I'm gonna just leave them be because I think they're looking fine. I just needed two barrels for my family, but for my video, I need one more detail. So I fire up the laser cutter again, do a quick pass on the red, a second layer of yellow, a little super glue, and some blue tape because this needs to be temporary. I just need the Donkey Kong barrels for right now. All the materials used in this video I picked up locally. I put a list in the description. So I, I never planned on making a classic video game prop, uh, not like this. This is, I often talk about how I'll have stuff on a list, stuff that I want to do, like, like goals that I want to get made. Yeah, I never thought barrels would be one of those items, but I'm actually really happy with how these turned out. Uh, I was really concerned along the way with how they were turning out at one point, especially with the painting. But um, no, these are great. Uh, these are gonna be a lot of fun. They weigh less than a, uh, a pound each. Um, they're larger than uh, what my cousin was originally asking for, for use in the parade that they're gonna be used in. But as a prop for my channel, I think Donkey Kong Barrels is actually kind of really fun. Uh, if you want the, the, the very simple pattern that I used to make these, I'll put that in the link in the description here. So you can download that for free if you wanna make some barrels for yourself. But uh, I know there's gonna be lots of different ways you can make a very classic Nintendo prop, something that's actually older than Mario. But uh, this is how Odin makes. So here's all the floor mats that I cut for the barrel that you actually saw me cut, right? This is the one I did tonight, which was fairly organized, came out pretty easily. Uh, here's what I did the night before for the prototype when I was still figuring it out. I cut up a lot of floor mats this week. I want to thank Ben Eady, Red Primal, Stephen Mills, and all of my Patreon supporters. Patreon members at the $5 and above level get access to my private Discord, which includes weekly games with me, proper related chat, and early access to live streams. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.